In these United States of America, we American Indians, we can be anything we want to be. Except American Indians. If you want to see an example of failed socialism, go to an Indian reservation. My mind, from what I understand and what my family has told me through, you know, stories, we were able to roam free. So we were very active and we moved through the land and we took care of the, the, the plants and the animals, but we also lived, you know, in harmony and I believe it was a beautiful time. We were a free people, absolutely free. <laughs> Socialism, I believe, began with the Long Walk. The Long Walk was when Manifest Destiny crossed the United States. Um, they had the railroads coming through, people needed to build homes, get to California, and the Indian nations were in the way. That's when they decided to send in the military and they moved them across the reservation and they were taken to a place called Bosque Redondo. Um, people were killed along the way. Um, a lot of the soldiers were very um, aggressive. So people did, you know, the women did get raped. Now we'll call it Wilte for it some. What does that mean? Wilte so, means a place of suffering, dying. Starvation, Not, nothing good. Just like the Nazi concentration camps. They had an idea of turning these nomadic tribes, hunter and gatherers, into farmers. They wanted us to farm, but nothing was growing. So they were freaked out too. And I'm like, they're not. They don't think anyone really knew what to do. And that's when um, we called for, you know, treaties. And after we agreed on it, the treaty is very simply written, and um, they allowed us to come home. So they were given American names. Um, you were given a CIB an actual number, and then you are given family cards, and so there began your family tree. So that number entitled you to a ration, and that's where you began to get your, you know, what was due to you. So that's where the parameters of control, and we couldn't leave the reservation. Back then, no one had diabetes and nobody was overweight because we lived off the land and we moved a lot. But we were heavily assimilated where we became more dependent on the system, and that's where, um, socialized programs came into play because there was never enough food, there was no refrigeration. So then let's start the um, commodity food program where everything came in cans, which where high sodium was introduced, high sugar was introduced. And so that's where the health of the people began to take a dive. That system is, is rife with waste, abuse, and malpractice. You know, it's been said and written that you know if you control the health care you can you can control the population and all that power and control over our lives since health care sometimes is a life or death decision is in the hands of the very bureaucrats and politicians in DC whom we don't trust you know many of the native uh, tribes are seeking to have independent health care uh, because of just all of the abuse you know the, the values that they're really pushing currently are liberalism and that that's a stepping stone to socialism and eventually to communism. Um, and that, how I tracked it back, because I started to see how education was part of it. Now they control our education system. They tell us what we can and cannot learn. And as I understood that, that's when I pulled my children out of school. Because when they started bringing home applications, and I thought it was a job application, but when I looked closer at it, my son showed me it was a food stamp application. I didn't realize how corrupt things were. I didn't realize what kind of environment we were living in. And I didn't realize what a socialistic community, how socialistic it was. It's really severe with some, um, some of my peers, my old peers, because they're in poverty and they don't know it. 
socialism benannt agi ee ya de nebe beso eltsgon bi ya tsjelgo eltsgon ajelti the the people that we voted in to lead us i mean i there's some good yes and there's some that yeah, i mean you hear about what, what they say what they're going to do but you know what when they get in it's the same thing so now because of the government is in such big control you have to ask the question how is the most heavily funded Amer in america tribe have the poorest population. The, the money that comes from the federal government is provided by programs. They don't give you checks. We don't get, you know, a, a per diem or whatever, it, just for being part of the tribe. No, we get nothing as Navajos. Only way you can get anything from the government is if you are the lowest of the low. So basically, when you're in that environment you basically have to sell off your freedom piece by piece in order to qualify for every little program so the programs end up hurting us and they numb us to what we actually need by providing us what they think we need i think those are the challenges that we're looking at in these socialist style governments where you know everything sounds great is because you give too much power and control to a small group of people and they don't want to give that up um, the tribal government's controlling various aspects of, of commerce, of, um, you know, utility management, of, um, uh, you know, the lack of private property ownership on the reservation. So, you know, again, all of these systems de-incentivize, you know, ownership. They de-incentivize people from, you know, opportunity um, other than, you know, the jobs that exist within government. So when the enterprises were created, they were essentially made to give skills to the Navajo people. And these enterprises were created to basically help um, introduce us into the modern age. And now they've morphed into something completely different in this modern age. The enterprises are now have become a for-profit entity for our own government. And that's what socialism has really wrapped us around, and now it's starting to use um, show communistic characteristics. Nenant nishiki don taz nishi panant nish. Ashkist ego huye bi ne tarolis e atis ne socialism. to teach my husband too, who was a product of socialism, hardcore socialism. And so he was only educated into the really um, heavy, hardcore reservation life. <clears throat> All right, um, growing up, it's been, it's been really tough, you know. I lost my mom when I was five years old um, due to my father drinking and I guess the, my, domestic violence and stuff, you know, I guess. It, took his anger out on my mom, my late mom. But um, he um, was, I guess, was so angry driving recklessly that my mom just didn't want nothing to do with him. And he jumped out of the vehicle with my one-year-old brother, you know. My, my one-year-old brother survived, but he broke his right leg and my mom died right there. So it, it's been tough, you know, it's been, it's just been something that, um, I don't think I've never forgot. I can't forget it, you know, I can't because I was there and it's been a nightmare ever since I was five. And he, he witnessed all this. And so that was heavy, heavy socialism that my heart just broke for him. And when someone is in that prison and they get angry, I had to fight through that anger and my theme I always told him is I will fight you to save you. 
Just recently, a couple years ago, I lost my brother, you know, I lost my brother to the exact same thing, but he, he passed away. And I always said that socialism took my brother because he turned to drugs, he turned to alcoholism, and he couldn't find work. And it's just, he, he, he wanted to check out. And socialism took him. And it, it, it really hurt my feeling that I couldn't help him, you know, and I couldn't save him. There are so many people dragging their feet and pointing fingers. And people like me, you know, I can't sell a thing. You know, something's got to happen. And quit pointing fingers and selling it together. Get our heads together and do it. That's what I think, you know, instead of pointing fingers and saying, hey, you know, that, 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 no, let's all combine, let's all get together and let's kick this thing in the butt and move on. I choose not to go in a socialist state. I do not want socialism. I don't want socialism for her or for my grandkids. No, I don't want that. I want them to be happy and live their life to their fullest, you know, bring happiness for their kids. It hasn't been working for almost, what, years? And, it's, and it sucks. Socialism sucks. There's no other word, there's no other way you can describe it. It fucking sucks. <laughs> Me as a mother, what do I do? You have to first take control of yourself, then you have to work with your spouse, and then you take control of your children, then you take control of your pocketbook, and then you decide to get off the program, and how do you do that through self-sufficiency? So my life and my tale and my truth has been to fight socialism, and I'm hoping that I can wake up as many Navajos as I can, tell them that you can do this. You know, I think the best way that we can honor our ancestors and everything that they overcame for us to benefit today from all of these opportunities um, is to is to become successful and to take advantage of the opportunities that they never had. Freedom is everything. It's in everything. And so when socialism creeps in, it's scary because they don't give you a choice and you're just given what you're given and you can't say anything. Yeah, even if I have to fight you to save you. And I think that's what I'm also projecting to my people. Even though they are so harsh on social media and they completely hammer at me, I tell them, I'll be here even if I have to fight you to save you. Nihetsatsu